Okay, I'm gonna give it a few seconds. Okay, wait, never mind. Alright, so I apologize for the potato stream during that 16 run, but hopefully things will be a lot better this time. So now we're gonna be doing 120 start. So we're gonna once ahead and go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Alright, so we just did 16 stars the warm up. Now we're gonna get to the real good stuff. Which is a nice star. Which is gonna be 120 star. So this is collecting every star in the game and then beating the game essentially. So you're gonna get to see all of the strats pretty much, or some of them because I'm not like Cheezo 5 or anything, but I like to consider myself pretty good at this category. So uh, this is without a doubt one of the best speedrun categories out there. It's one of the most popular to watch. Um, it's getting more and more and more optimized pretty much every single day. So I feel like this is, I'm going to try to put on a really good show for you, try to explain everything as best as I can, and hopefully play somewhat decently. <laughs> so once again, the first trick I'm going to be going for is like you just skip. Basically, there's parts on the left and right side of the bridge that for some dumb reason just don't take the cuts you need to account. So I'm going to try to long jump off the left side of the bridge and it saves 8 seconds. Hopefully I get this. And because the 16 star stream was a potato stream, I'm gonna go for LBLJ again. Because why the heck not? It saves less time in 120 star. But it it will if I can get this first try, then it'll save me having to do an extra trick with the OB. Alright, looking good so far. Wow, two for two with LBLJ today. Nice. So what this is gonna allow me to do is make one trip to Bob on Battlefield instead of two. And it saves like under 10 seconds. So that's, this runs off to a pretty good use of the start. So in Battles of the Dark World here, there's a couple of cycles you can go for on this stage. I'm gonna be going for the fastest arcade track cycle known as Shigeru Cycle. I'm gonna do Poverty Shake movement just to put it safe. And I screwed up, so now I'm probably not gonna make Shigeru. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. But thankfully, I can make a fairly normal cycle, which. Only was like three seconds. Okay, I'm surprised that I didn't die there. We didn't die. Perfect. This stage is very movement intensive, so it's okay that I messed a few spelling things up here and there. Alright, so this is looking like this will be a sub three dark world, which is nice. There we go. And once again, backwards long jumping or BLJing is a glitch where if you long jump under a ceiling on a very steep slope or on stairs, then you can basically start gaining infinite backward speed until you break free or something. Because Mario's backward speed when long jumping isn't capped. And you can use that to clip through walls and stuff. You'll be seeing me go for that a couple times in this run. So I'm gonna enter Dark World. I'm gonna re-enter Dark World and then exit out because the store still requires me to have eight stars. So I can't exit through right now. Now I'm gonna use that one star I got and enter Womp's Fortress. So this is probably one of the most reset heavy levels in the game. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong in this level. Um, but there's also a lot of really cool tricks in this level, so hopefully I don't do so terribly here. First trick I'm going to go for is called Owlist. Basically, I'm going to do a triple jump walk kick into the cage. Just skip having to use the owl. It takes like five seconds if done off the lane. It's kind of difficult. That should work. Oh, dang. That should work. There we go. Alright, so next I'm going to be attempting a star called Cannonless. So because Nintendo is so good at making games, there's a seam in the wall where you can... There's a seam in the wall that you normally blast away with the cannon that you can ledge grab on. And what I'm going to be doing to ledge grab where the star is, is the setup sound by Sock Builder, which is actually slower than just going at it, um, especially if I do that. But it's way more consistent than what the runners were originally doing. So they don't... Okay, that's really bad. That's okay, there's a backup star over here that I can get. Oh my god. There we go. Oh, it's a strat called Cannonless. My bad.
So we're going to be attempting that again, and this time I'm just going to go for it until I get it. Because at this point, I don't really have any backups. That's much better. Moment of truth. There we go. So I'm going to be doing the first 100 coin star. You always pair 100 coin stars with another star because it's one it's one less trip to the level. And normally it's going to be with red coin stars. There's a few exceptions to this. But usually it's just that red coins are spread all about the level and you need to go all around the level to get coins anyways. So it's usually worth it. Okay, uh, I really do not want to grab the star again. There we go. So unfortunately I'm not going to be able to make a fast cycle here. So I'm going to go for a half cycle. You can make it when that plank is on the other side of the platform. And that saves a little bit of time. Oh god, that's not good. Okay, so I'm just going to do a trip from walking and back on, get back on. I need to ride that platform for the coins and also the direct coin there. Th yeah, in a w normal 120 run, I definitely would have reset by now. Because this is not a good once by any means. But that's just kind of the nature of this level. It just screws you over in so many ways. Thankfully, I have enough coins, so I'm not going to have to worry about getting a backup box or anything. In fact, I have extra coins. I have two extra coins. Okay, I don't know what just happened there. Alright, it's fine. I can miss that one coin. Something you should probably know by now is that Tiny optimizations in this game matter tremendously. Like they keep getting found left and right, and you kind of want to, you kind of have to do all of them if you want to have a chance at the top time in this game at this point. Because this is again an extremely optimized run, somewhat. So now I'm going to be doing the Want King Star. I'm saving these two stars for last for a very specific reason. You can just kind of ground pound through the one thing like this. I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, I didn't get the swag dive. You have one frame to do an input there, and so I always like to go for a dive. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, now the last star I'm going to be playing with is zoomed in camera because it, the tower lags the game tremendously on N64 hardware. And so this is the best way to do this. Alright, this star was executed perfectly so far. Not even a sub-8 bomb, so that's kind of embarrassing. Alright, whatever. We're out of that stage, finally. So now we're going to be heading on to everyone's favorite level, Jolly Roger Bay, which I am terrible at. So I'm going to go ahead and say this now. Optimized swimming requires tapping A into rhythm rather than just mashing A. And I'm going to be having, I'm going to probably be kind of quiet while I'm swimming um, because I'm going to need to be listening to the audio. Because that's how I know if I have optimal swimming on. So right now I'm swimming on the lake. This is one of those stars that's kind of a devil in disguise because even though it's not really difficult, getting these coins optimally is like really tough because you have to make really tight turns and it's easy to miss the coin if you lose a ton of time and then you get really angry. Right, I'm gonna hold up, I'm gonna hold C up and C left here to turn the camera away. You're gonna be seeing me do a lot of um, text and a lot of camera manipulation to reduce lag throughout this run, especially in this next stage. So I'm going to be doing a lot of camera turning here. Especially at the start here. Kind of just keep the whole stage out of view. 
Like, if I wasn't turning the camera right now, this stage would be lightning lane, honestly. So coming up is kind of a bit of a disappointment to most people who watch this game. Um, you can actually clip into the ship, into a corner of the ship, and just get time to lure the eel out. But I don't really know how to do it, so I'm just going to lure him out. It's not that much slower. Like, every single time I'm turning the camera, it's usually for lag manipulation. Here, I just kind of have to open the four chests in a specific order. It can be kind of rough, because these chests have weird physics. You basically have to be, as long as you're swimming within a general 90 degree angle at the front of the chest, you'll almost always get it, no matter where you touch it. Alright, this, this, this part's pretty funny. Just, just watch. I grabbed the star early enough, so Mario's doing the swimming animation in midair. Pretty lit. So now I am going to talk about ceilings, because they're relevant on this star. So ceiling hitboxes in this game are no-go zones for Mario. They like to do everything in their power to keep him out. He cannot voluntarily enter one, and if he tries to move into one, his movement will get cancelled. But in water, ceilings will actually push Mario downward. So what I'm going to do is swim to this steep floor here, which has a really thin hitbox, clip through it, and then use the ceiling to down warp into the cave, like that. That saves barely any time, but it's so cool and it's so easy that I always do it. I did not mean to run to that stag lot slag right there. Those chests were kind of unoptimal. This is unfortunately one of the longer stages in 120 Star. Right now I'm going to be doing the Jetstream Star, and you might be thinking to yourself, don't you need the Metal Cap for that? Well, uh, fear not, my friends, because with optimal swimming, you can actually just swim right through the Jetstream. As you're about to see here. And if all goes well in this run, I'm actually not going to even need to hit the metal cap switch at all, which is really cool. Now I'm going to do the 100 coin star. So of the 15 main courses in this game, this course is the tightest on coins at 104. But three of the coins I'm going to be skipping are in the cave with the Goomba, so I have one spare coin in this entire round. Luckily there's very little RNG in the star. Because the only real RNG you have to worry about is the coin box at the start. All the other coins are just kind of static. But then there's also these clams, which the red coin hitboxes jut out just barely enough for you to be able to grab them without opening them. And this climb is annoying because of the jest stream. Alright, I didn't get it. Unfortunately, it doesn't waste too much time. Enter the cave here for a little bit. Fun fact, this blue coin switch that I'm about to hit here, if you miss any of these blue coins, you automatically can't get the 100 coin star, because you only, at most you can get 99 if you miss one. But I didn't get it. I got all of them, so we're good. It, you really shouldn't miss any of them. And if you do, then you're just bad. I'm gonna grab three coins here. If I, grab, if I can grab these three, which I did, then I can do a tiny optimization later on. And here I'm just going to swim to the slope and punch, which will just shoot me upwards for no good reason. Alright, so there you go. That's kind of what I was going for. And I'm opening the cannon here, because it's just convenient to open the cannon now, because I need it for the next star, and I need, it to, I need to go over here to get a right point anyways, so might as well open it now. Hopefully I don't fall off here. It's actually it's a lot easier to fall here than you might think. Alright, uh, once out here, I'm going to turn around and then go into the ship like that. And I need to make sure I grab these last two coins in this specific order, otherwise the camera will pan the other way during the star cutscene and show off the whole stage, which will lag the game. Overall, that wasn't too bad of 100, aside from the clam, the second clam. 
All right, next I'm gonna do the cannon star, and I'm gonna be a wuss on this star and aim for a, one of the pillars. You don't have to aim for any of the pillars, but it's... And I know how to do the other strat, I just don't like doing it in runs, because it is a little risky. Right, that was a little slow. Hopefully I don't aim too low here. Oh, that's super good. So a little interesting fact about this star is that I'm playing on the English version of the game. On the Japanese version of the game, this star is actually not in a box. It is um, just kind of out in the open, and that saves a couple seconds because you don't have to wait for the box animation. The Japanese version is actually a couple seconds faster for this category, but I don't have the Japanese version, and, so, and, and the English version isn't that much slower, so it's okay if you want to play on the English version. So now we're going to lure our friend, I think his name is Yonagi, out of the cave. And I know this eel scared a lot of people as a kid, but you can just hide above him and it works pretty much every time. Assuming you're not too far away and he doesn't go back in the hole, which is nice. Alright, we're out of JRP. Finally. Okay, so now we're going to be actually doing some fast stars, thankfully. So I'm going to be heading to the first of the two stars in the Princess and Secret slide. So if you have any bets for what time I'm going to get on the slide, you might want to go ahead and post them in chat now. Um, just know that I'm probably not going to get a 12.6 or a 12.7 because I'm actually bad. So what I'm going to do on the slide here for both slide stars, I'm going to use this wall to turn me around like so. I'm going to use this other railing over here to turn me around again and then just jump, and that skips most of the slide. There we go. Nice 12-8. And now for this next star, I'm going to go to the wing cap course, and I'm going to enter Mario Cam, because this light actually lags the game quite a bit. So here's the wing cap stage. Um, I'm gonna actually be pressing the switch here, unlike the metal cap. These, those two coins are really difficult to grab. Flying at high speeds in this game is really annoying. It's really hard to control Mario. And to get in order to go high, you basically just kind of have to keep going downwards like this. That's how you gain speed. Here I'm gonna go for something called text skip. So you're supposed to land on the switch and get a small text box, but you can jump off of it and then jump into the star, and that skips the text box. Pretty free. Now I'm going to head to the other Princess of Secret slide star. This time I'm going to be getting the one that's in the box. And I'll be doing basically the exact same thing again. Oh, my bonk so 14, unfortunately. Yeah, that bonk is actually pretty difficult to avoid. Okay, I actually managed to ground pound the box. That's an accomplishment for me, because I hate that box. All right, so here comes the major time save of doing LBLJ and 120 star. Normally, I'd have to just get one star from Bob on Battlefield, and I'd have to make two trips, because you need 10 stars in order to get the wing cap, but now I can just do it all in one trip. And now that I'm in BOB, I'm gonna do a trick called Bomb Clip, where I'm gonna use this Bob Bomb and its bloated hitbox. I'm gonna grab it during a frame as when it's about to explode, which is, causes it to float, and its hitbox will push me backwards. I'm gonna try to use that to put through the gate. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna respawn the bomb on. You didn't see that. There we go. Just keep having to free the chain jump. Alright, now we're gonna be doing some slow stars. So we're gonna start with the King bob -omb star, the first star you would normally do. So I'm gonna be doing a couple different strats here. First, I'm gonna explain A, B kicks. So as I'm going onto this slope, I'm gonna be holding A. I'm gonna be tapping B to do these kicks of it. That works on a couple types of slopes, and you can use that to climb up slopes. You can do only four wall kicks there if you hold neutral during each of them. So 
So for King Bob, I'm here, I'm just going to kind of throw him and then wait until he starts moving and jump behind him. Um, I do this for two reasons. One is if I don't wait, then um, King Bob will actually kind of auto aim onto me, and it makes it very hard to get behind him. In fact, I think it's literally impossible. And so just by doing that, I'm able to get behind him easier. And also, fun fact, you can take get damage from King Bob while he's on the ground. All right, so now it's coming up is what I believe one of the more interesting stars in one point star. Because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat Koopa the Quick as fast as possible. And then go all the way down to the beginning of the track and then beat him again. But I'll explain more why in a second. So the faster I finish the race, the faster Koopa the Quick will finish. But he still finishes it pretty freaking slow. So I'm just going to take the same route that I used in the first star. I could have done the four wall kicks there, but I didn't. I thought I had a bad position, so I just kind of went to it. Oh. That's kind of a bad time, but that's fine. Any time under 30, I think is okay. So now that I've beaten Goober the Quick, I'm actually going to go all the way back down to the beginning, and I'm going to open the cannon, because believe it or not, there is actually enough time from when I beat the course to um, go back down and accomplish this. And Koopa still moves during this, so that's pretty nice. So now I'm, I'm going to take a different route back up. It's okay to use the cannons after you finish the race. Koopa won't count you for cheating if you do. Also, I don't think I beat him up. Well, I think I'm barely going to beat him up. Alright, we did it. Uh, once again, you have a frame to do an input there, and I always like to try for a jump, because that saves time. Alright, time for one of the most RNG-heavy stars in the game. So, SM64 has 65,114 possible states of RNG to be in. And the way RNG works in this game is that on every in-game frame, it'll cycle every single object, and even some non-objects will call object will call RNG more than one time per frame, per frame. And RNG can be used to determine a lot of things. For the sake of this star, it determines enemy positions and the trajectory coins take after being released from stuff. So that was kind of okay RNG, I just didn't do it well. I just to get on that line. I'm gonna use the shell to get a few coins here. From the horse river. I also have the wing cap because I'm collecting a lot of coins from the air. Because there's a lot of coins in the air from these coin rings. Alright, I need at least nine coins from the air, but I'm going to try to get a lot more. As you can see, I already got a lot more, but I'm going to do a swoop around and see if I can get even more. Alright, 67 is, might be a record for me. I don't think I've ever gotten 67 out of the air before. So, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this box, and I'm going to kill two Goombas, and I'm going to skip a pole. Which is pretty cool. Alright, I don't know where that other coin went. These poles also are a little bit annoying with RNG. Uh, where's that other coin go? Okay, I'm just gonna this oh, I did not know a bubble bomb could spawn here. So I'm gonna go for something kinda dumb here that really no one goes for, but I'm gonna try to see if I can show this off. Uh, I didn't get the RNG that would allow me to. So if one of those coins had gone near that final red coin, I would have been able to attempt something called double star activation. Where if you grab the 100, if you activate the 100 coin and red coin star cutscenes on the same frame, then they'll play at the same time. You can do that there by having your 100 coin go near that final red coin, but it's RNG dependent and it's also frame perfect, so the chances of me getting it still would have been really slim. You're going to be seeing me use more AB kicks for these next two stars to get to the floating island quicker. This is called Sky Jump. I'm gonna kick up the slope and then slide down it. And then use the speed to get up to the island without the cannon. So the angle I 
land from that rollout. I don't know if that was good or not, but I don't know how much it really matters. Because when you land from a flight, you can store Mario's yaw velocity. Yaw is one of three ways you can rotate a three-dimensional object. And it determines how far he's leaning to the left or right. And it can get stored in between flights. And so sometimes if you land from that rollout in a weird way and then enter the cannon, you'll just veer off to the side once you start flying. But I, it didn't happen, so we're good. Now I've got one more star. By the way, um, you don't actually need the wing cap to get every star in this level, but um, it's just way faster and easier to do it. The secret star in particular takes a really long time if you don't have the wing cap. Alright, we're out of BOB now. Now we're going to be heading to what a lot of runners consider the hardest part of the run, and that's the basement. Basement has Shifting Sand Land, Hazy Maze Cave, and Lava Lava Land. LLL is a pretty easy stage for the most part, but the other two stages are really, really difficult in 120 star. This is generally where a lot of good paced runs will die. There's a lot of really difficult tricks and stuff. Got MIPS here. Pretty easy. And now I'm gonna be heading to Shifting Sandline and doing a trick called Colorless, which is kind of an extension on the bomb club you saw me do just a little while ago. Except I'm gonna combine it with a glitch called the Hands Free Glitch, which will allow me to double jump and ground pound while still getting pushed by the bomb. Alright, that's the medium bomb and. That's a lot slower. There's four frames that a bomb on floats. And that's the third frame. You can do it with that bomb size, but I didn't want to risk it. So I'm going to instead go for a jack on top list. Nice, I got it. Yeah, you're supposed to go on the four pillars and then ride an elevator all the way down. You can just wall kick on top of that little red box and then jump into the hole. But you can also just wall kick straight from there. And it's free. Kind of. I'm just going to try to take out Irock as fast as possible. If I miss any of these hits, then I do lose quite a bit of time, because Irock will do this attack where he, like, pounds up and down from one side of the arena to the other. Alright. Now I'm going to attempt Colorless again. I think for this attempt, I'm just going to go for it until I get it. I'll just keep respawning the bob on because I don't really want to do any other backup stars. Alright, now I have it in the hands free state. Alright, second try is acceptable. So, yeah, there you go. That's Polaris for y'all. So I'm going to do the talent star, and I'm going to do the star now just because I'm going to do the red coin star in a little bit, and then Klepto can get in my way, and I can accidentally activate the star cutscene if he, if I don't get the star when I'm doing reds. There we go. Yeah, that fly guy can be kind of trolly, but if you run up the right side of the pillar, he typically behaves. Alright, so now I'm going to do the red coin star. So, like, two years ago or something, this red coin star got pretty rerouted, and this new route is pretty sick, and also this movement after you can pay attention if I get this, this is really sick. Nice. I'm just kind of jump over the slope here. So right there, if I didn't collect the star, the club that would have been right above me, and there's a good chance I would have touched him and accidentally activated the star cutscene. I'm gonna slow down when going across this pillar so that I can do that clip into a double jump, which just makes it faster to get into flight. Because unlike a normal triple jump, you don't have to be moving in order to start a flight with the wing cap. You can just stand in place and Activate a play. Alright, I'm gonna some talk boxes and put me into the ground. It did it. That talk box talk boxes can downwork you for like no good reason. Thankfully it didn't happen there. That was a 
pretty decent SSR reds. You can sometimes long jump past that star, so I'm thankful that I did it there. Now I'm going to be attempting the 100 coin star. This is another kind of tricky part of the stage. Um, this star used to be really freaking RNG heavy when you did it back when we did it right with that involved getting on the shell. Alright, I'm just going to let the two of them die like that. But now uh, we use the route that has the wing cap instead, and it's far less RNG dependent, although there's still quite a bit of RNG. And also, if this thing runs out, then that's really painful. And you only have a few seconds to spare with it. So now I'm going to be going on all four of those pillars. I need to make sure I touch all four of them, because that will cause the top of the pyramid to open up, but it's going to be really finicky. Sometimes they just don't activate, even if it looks like you touched it. If you hold neutral before going on the pillar, you can actually just get the third hit to clip onto the... Oh, I'm trying to go for a roll off, off a roll out off of this pillar, like that. Alright, just got a couple more things left to do. Alright, I should be able to make it, and I haven't missed a single coin, which is nice. Well, that was kind of slow. Yeah, if your wing cap runs out before you enter the pyramid, then you did that really slowly. Now I gotta make sure I don't fall down here. If I fall at this point, it's really punishing. Alright, we didn't work out. If you, if that second secret is the one you don't want to miss, anything else in your mind. Really are, okay. The first and second, I guess. If, once you make it to the third time. So I'm playing on the Anguish version, which is actually a good thing, because after this star, if you're playing on the Japanese version and you move immediately after collecting that fifth secret, then the game's sound will instantly die and any attempt to leave the course will crash the game. And it's a glitch called Sound Glitch. And to, normally to avoid it, you would just have to do like a neutral jump in order to make sure Mario doesn't immediately move, but since I'm playing on the Anguish version, I don't even have to worry about it. With that, we have the 100 coins stuff. So I'm getting the 100 coins with the secrets here because there aren't actually 100 coins outside the pyramid, so you, have, you basically have to go inside the pyramid to get them. That is not the right angle. That long jump to the star is really awkward because the camera sucks. One of your worst enemies in this game is the camera. It's not too bad for the most part, but it can be kind of trolly. And this last star is really easy. There we go. Alright, so we're done with shipping Sandland. That was decent, for the most part. But now we're going to be heading on to Hazy Maze Cave, and the first thing I'm going to be attempting is by far the hardest strat you can attempt in 120 star. Um, I'm only going to attempt it once. Um, this is incredibly difficult and barely saves any time, but I'm going to try it for the sake of the marathon. And it looks really sick if I get it. Oh god. Okay, I don't want that to happen. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to stop talking here because I'm going to let this try to speak for itself. Damn, it still worked. All right, I'm gonna try it again. This is this is really this is a really bad strat, and I probably shouldn't even be attempting this again. But I want to try it again. There we go. That should work. Ease. All right. <laughs> Whatever. So that was slow, and I definitely lost time by doing that, but. Whatever, we still made it. Now I'm going to attempt the 100 coin star. Which is also really stupid. So 
I'm gonna activate this elevator, head over here and grab these two coins. And now I'm gonna head back and not miss my ride, like that. I'm gonna not break that box so that I can avoid some lag. Skip part of this elevator, grab this red coin, and then just long trip over here. So I'm gonna actually save the rest of this red coin room for later. Um, I'm just gonna kinda head to the toxic maze now and get some of the harder parts of the star out of the way. And then head in here. There's another backwards long jump I'm gonna do in this star, but it's a lot easier than the one I just did. And it saves more time. This one's a lot easier, but I can still mess it up. Alright, there we go. That's the last BLJ I'm going to be doing in this run, by the way. So I hope you enjoy those. I'm gonna head back to the red coin room and finish off the rest of that. So, coming up is another pretty RNG specific spot. Um, this eyeball can just completely ruin your run sometimes. I'm just gonna run off without collecting this coin. This is actually really risky because its coin can go anywhere. Right, I have no idea what it is. Okay, that's actually a pretty decent spot. Overall, not too bad of a one my room. Okay, so as you've seen several times in this level already, you can just kind of jump over walls in this stage for no good reason. They just didn't put ceilings in a lot of places. I'm going to be doing that for the next two stars. Um, first, I'm going to head to the Metal Cap stage, actually. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not, I'm not gonna hold forward there right away because there's actually a death plane right there that will kill you if you hit it. So by just holding back, you can avoid it. I'm gonna be doing a trick here called Metal Cap Skip. I'm gonna try to get all eight red coins and the star with this Metal Cap that you get from entering the level. It's pretty lenient. You have a couple seconds to spare, I'm pretty sure. And since I don't need the Metal Cap for any star in this run, I'm gonna skip pressing the switch. Alright, so I messed up there a little bit, but I still am going to have plenty of time. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, that sucks. I accidentally moved too slow there. That's fine, though. I can still skip the metal cap. Just gotta fall into the water like that. I'm going to do that jump again, but this time I'm going to collect the star that's actually in the underground cavern. It is kind of precise though, because you're jumping off such a tiny box, and so sometimes you can miss it. Thankfully I got it all three times. So next I'm going to do um, the Amazing Emergency Exit Star. So you're supposed to go on the Toxic Maze, and then take a different exit out, and then climb on Mesh to get to the star. But I'm going to head to this room, and just triple jump walking up to the star. I think that's, that's one of the biggest skips in the run, and I think it's severely overlooked. There's a lot of really... Most of the skips in this game are just precise jumps, or just doing a jump at the right time or something. I'm going to do the infamous Christmas Miracle Star. So it's called the Christmas Miracle because at first we didn't used to know how it worked. But basically, if Mario's quarter frames line up properly and you fall from a really decent height, you can actually land in the switch without having to use the metal cap. 
Alright, that's a really, really bad hack. I'm gonna see if I can save it with the ground pound. I didn't. But there's a really easy backup for it. That's just... Okay, that didn't work. This HMC has not been too great. There you go. Now we've got the last star, the infamous Watch for Rolling Rock star. I'm sure a lot of you have fond memories of this star. Or you know a bunch of memes about it. These boulders can sometimes get in your way. They can sometimes bounce off to the left and hit you, and you lose a little bit of time. All right, so that wasn't too great of an HMC, but thankfully I don't, I didn't mess up terribly, and I got to show off Dr. Gaze Field Day. And it saves one second to get towed after HMC, and also this is a really hard star. Yeah, that was difficult. So contrary to the last two stages, this next stage isn't that hard. Alright, unless I do that. So, something something to point out about LL is I actually have to collect the first four stars in the level first, because the shell will spawn on stars four and five and six, and I need that for the 100 coin star. So I'm going to get the first four stars here, and then I'm going to do the 100 coins. So for that, sorry, just skip the log by flying over the fence. Another really overlooked skip that somehow skipped the QA testers. And again, as I'm long jumping towards that slope, oh god, that's not good. As I'm long jumping towards that brown slope, I'm holding Z so I can get an instant jump dive off of it. These bullies like to be annoying. Except for that guy, he's free. I'm gonna be doing the exact same movement now, but this time I'm gonna be doing getting the big boy star. This time I'm actually gonna try to go for the ledge grab skip. Okay, I got to show it off this time. Alright, and you can skip that ledge grab right there, and it saves a little bit of time. Alright, I somehow didn't long jump. I thought I heard Mario make a Yahoo, so I just assumed I long jumped. That was obviously a mistake. Alright, now I'm going to do the red coin star. And after I collect the star, the shell will spawn. I'm gonna do the 100 coin star. I'm gonna get 80 of the coins outside the volcano on the shell, and then get 20 of the coins just going up the volcano. Pretty self explanatory. Oh, I have to make sure I don't break my shell. Or miss too many coins. Okay, so right there you can get lag that's RNG dependent. One of the eyes in this level can rotate his pupil left or right, and if he rotates it in the wrong direction, then it causes a little bit of lag there. I got bad RNG there. Okay, I can spare that coin. I think I have, you have two spare coins on the sprout outside the volcano. Those are a couple backup coins right before you enter. I didn't want to risk hitting a bully. Alright, we did the star bully list. No more than if I didn't hit a bully. Alright, we made it. 
There's actually, I believe, 26 coins in the volcano. Um, three of them are near the elevator star, one of them is right behind where you start, and two of them are from the police. So you don't want to have to get any of the other coins, because they're way out of the way. Now I'm going to do the elevator star. This rust star is really easy to die to. You make one wrong input. I'm going to be using a lava boost to skip the first elevator. Right here. This dive rod is extremely risky. We made it. Alright. Now the reason I have to collect so many stars early on in the run is so I could have 50 leaving LLL, because now I need to get the second myth star. Because the second myth spawns at 50 stars. And this myth is faster than the first myth, but he's still really easy to catch. In the Japanese version, both MIPS are at the fast speed, but in the US version, the first one's really slow. Alright, that was awkward. I'm gonna take a little detour here to go to the Vanish Cap course, because I also need the Vanish Cap for this run. So the Vanish Cap is a pretty short and sweet, sweet course, in my opinion. Although I don't do the fast movement here. The top level runners may cringe. Make that elevator cycle. I'm gonna go for a tech skip here. This one's a lot more difficult. Siglavik! Had to do it. Just to Cosmo, aka Narcissa, right? Throw it out with that. And now we're gonna be heading on to Cool Cool Mountain, aka CCM. So this first star, I'm going to go for the strat once, and I'm probably going to die to it, because I didn't really practice it too much. Alright, we're good. You can't normally um, wall kick out of a backflip unless you're facing the wall, and you have no visual indicator as to when to wall kick, so 9 out of 10 times you miss time and to die. You only have a 5 frame window to wall kick in this game. Do the red point star. This is one of my favorite stars in the game to do. It just, it's so fun. You know, there's a lot of really cool movement. Oh, if you got a, if I got a first frame wall kick there, that's my favorite first to get in the entire run. We call first frame wall kicks firsties, and the thing about them is that. They will conserve any momentum you have going into the star, going into the wall kick. So like, if you launch up at the wall and then wall kick, you gain, you retain all that momentum. That was a really clean red point star for the most part. I'm gonna do the slide star next, and there's a really big shortcut on this star. That's bigger than the one the devs put into the game. You basically just fall off here. And you can skip all the way down to the bottom of the slide. Really easy. I'm gonna kind of walk into the door like that. Alright, the strats for the fans. That one's for the fans. I don't think that really loses that much time, but it looks so cool. Now coming up is another really scary 100 coin star, so I'm going to be entering the slide, hopefully with 24 coins, and that means I can only miss one coin on the slide. I'm going to be doing this star with the penguin race, and if I mess up anything on the race, I have to redo the entire slide and I lose around a minute. 
So hopefully that doesn't happen. That red coin off to the left there, you can grab that if you want a safety red, but screw that. We're speedrunners, we don't need to worry about that. Alright, I have one spare coin, so that's fine. I meant to dive there. Alright, that jump is really tough to make without missing any coins. Alright, once you get past those parts, you're usually in the clear, if you haven't missed any up to that point. I'm gonna miss one intentionally here. Because you want to end this slide with exactly 100 coins, and you want your 100th coin to be this last one, because otherwise the star spawns up a little higher up than usual. I'm gonna wait for the penguin here. If you don't wait for the penguin there, it can push you off during the star cutscene, and you still get the star, but then afterwards you would immediately die. And that has happened to me more times than I care to admit. Alright, there we go. We didn't fail that star, thankfully. And you might be wondering if it's actually slower to let collect coins and courses because they count up, but you have to wait for the Mario putting on his hat animation. Anyway, so most of the time, coin getting points in the level doesn't matter. That was weird. And this is a really cool star, and it's really easy to learn unless you do that. So if you ever want to show something cool off to your friends, just do this. And I was sea riding there a few times just so I could reduce a little bit of lag. Alright, now it's time for the snowman Floss's head star. This is the star where I will inevitably bonk and fall into the chimney, which is a hilarious time loss. Alright, we're good. So I'm gonna do something a little different than most people will do. I'm gonna do the scenic route. I'm just gonna jump off right here. And then just kind of keep going. There's a specific point on the near the beginning of that slide that you need to hit, and then from there you just gotta walk all the way over here and stand next to the snowman like this. So you can jump off there and take that detour, and it still works. And I just find it more interesting to do than to just wait here. That was a really good CCM. It somehow that wasn't a cold split. So if any of you are scared of ghosts, you probably don't want to be watching this next stage. Because uh, it's Big Boost Haunt, and it's a spooky level. Especially that freaking piano. I know, right? This is also a really scary stage for speedrunning, because there's a lot that can go wrong in this stage. And it's one of the longer levels, unfortunately. Because you have to, mainly because the entrance takes a while. Alright, so I'm going to start with go on a ghost hunt, where you have to go around the mansion and kill five ghosts. Um... We used to do this in the opposite order that I'm going to do them in here, and there's some strats for this that are just like, really stupid. So I'm going to kind of play a little silly here. Okay, this next one is very easy for me to fail. Okay, that's called the Lucius dive, because a guy named Lucius found out you could do that, and it's super easy to mess that up and fall all the way down to the lower level, which loses around 30 seconds. So I was very close to bonking there, and I got a little bit scared, but we're fine. I'm gonna try to kill these two boos with just one ground pound, and then slide kick immediately afterwards, so I only get one text box. And also, best speed kick ever. A speed kick is when you land from a long jump, dive rock, or really you're just moving fast in general, and you let go of the joystick, and hold A, and then tap B to do a kick which allows you to preserve your momentum and is also useful for starting triple jumps. And that's what you saw me do heading to that door there. Okay, so that was a really good ghost hunt for the most part. Now I'm going to do the 100 point star. This also was a pretty big route change. It used to be done with the merry-go-round star. Now I do it with the red coins. This is uh, one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite 100 point routes. Because uh, you go all over the mansion and you even go outside for a little bit at one point. But this is also another star that's really difficult to do fast. So you grab this vanish cap here, you go through here. Now I'm on a time limit, because if this vanish cap runs out, I'm going to be unable to enter the um, 
painting again, so I need to make sure I get everything out here. Fortunately, I have two spare coins, uh, so it doesn't really matter how much time you spend. You can miss two. But as you can see, yeah, I still have quite a bit of time left over, and I even have an extra coin. Hello. Death perception in this mansion sucks. Also, so does the camera. So I'm gonna kill this eyeball and then walk it up here to get this red coin and head back down. It's kind of a nice way to spend the time. I'm gonna do something kind of similar here. I'm gonna kill this eyeball and then run over here and activate both these coffins and get these red coins. And then get the, eye the eyeball's blue coin. something kind of interesting here. I'm gonna get two of these blue coins, wait for this boo to come out, kill it, and then uh, walk up over here and get these other two. Also, an interesting fact is that Abu's laugh is actually Bowser's laugh, just sped up. Okay, this is a part where you can get what's known as a factory. Getting a factory is basically when you fall from the higher part of the mansion to the lower part and you have to climb all the way back up. Right. We made it through that first. We made it through that already, thankfully. Now I just need to get over to the red coin star. Which is over here. That wall jump is basically blind because the camera doesn't show you where the wall is. In relation to you. And now I'm gonna do the factory star. So basically my chances of getting a factory at this point are absolutely zero, because I have to go down for this star anyways, and then the other three stars, you never even go into those areas. Alright, this jump is kind of annoying, and I'm probably going to fall into the water attempting this. Alright, that's not what I meant to do. Alright, that was actually okay, because I was able to skip going into the water. So if I face this painting, contrary to what you might think, if I face this painting after killing all five of these boos, then that big blue comes out sooner for no good reason. Alright, I got the fast strat, which means I'll be able to get the star with this ground pound. And now I have three stars left, and they're all pretty fast and pretty easy. Well, I say that, but they're, they're easy for this stage. Um, they're definitely still hard to do, optimally. Start with the Vanish Cap Star. The star is pretty straightforward. Oh, I didn't mean to ledge grab there. Yeah. Oh. You can actually bounce on that boo in the wall, and I was trying to show it off just for the fun of it. It wastes time, but because it's a marathon, I just wanted to show it off. With hashtag 64 stars height. Now we're gonna do Big Boo's balcony. By the way, I know there's yeah, the first star actually spawns stairs that allow you to get up to the higher levels early. Um, actually, I'm gonna do. I messed up. I didn't do the right camera, so I'm gonna do this star first. You can just skip a puzzle by just jumping from this balcony to the other one. In the DS version of the game, there's an invisible wall there. There's a, there's not an invisible wall. There's glass there, so you can't do that jump. It's sad. So yeah, on the first star, I actually caused stairs to spawn after the getting all the after killing the big one on the first star. But I don't need the stairs because Nintendo forgot you could wall jump in this game. I meant to go through the left door there. If you go through the left door, Mario pushes instead of pulls it, and it takes a few frames. If you notice, I did that for every star in this level. Alright, that was actually a really good DBH. At least for me. And 
Now it's time for the last course we have to do before going upstairs. Dire Dire Docks along with Bowser in the Fire Sea. So, I'm going to be starting off with DDD 100. So the way DDD's Red Coin Star is supposed to work is you're supposed to beat the first star, then beat Bowser in the Fire Sea. And after you do that, a bunch of poles appear in the submarine room. And the submarine is then gone. But it's actually faster to use the submarine itself to get all the red coins. And it's actually possible to do that. And it's pretty difficult. And if you mess anything up on that section of the level, you lose a lot of time. But it's still way faster than waiting on the really, really slow pulls. Also, just like Jeremy, you have one spare coin this route. Getting coins underwater like this is really awkward. As you can tell that the devs didn't really care much about coin placement here and how Mario's physics work. Alright, so swimming to this next ring of coins here is basically blind. So let's see if I can find them. And once again, I'm using different camera angles in this room because the submarine lags the game terribly, as you're about to see. Alright, so now the fun stuff is going to begin. By fun, I mean difficult stuff. That part's not too bad, and neither is this one. I got first in there. Ooh, Ooh. I managed to get a third wall jump there, and I would have grabbed the other red coin. Now I have to do this annoying jump back onto the sub. I have to do that again after getting this red coin because I'm gonna have to go into the water again. This isn't the hard part though. Alright, so now we're getting on to the hard part. There's a triple jump dive I'm going to go for to get this last red point, and this is probably the most annoying part of the entire star. Alright, got it. First try. That's way, way harder than I just made it look. Alright. Other than that one fall into the water, that wasn't too bad. I just gotta get the red coin star. There you go. So for that triple jump dive, you want one thing that makes it a little bit easier is if you delay pressing B after the triple jump, because you get a little bit more height and distance from the dive. That's something you should probably keep in mind. Now I got a couple of either stars before the next big hurdle, Bowser in the fire seat. the last chess star we have to do in the game. Alright, I'm probably going to miss this last chest. Nice, I'm not dead. Alright, also I don't want to swim into the wall after- I don't want to swim past this star because if I swim into the wall I'll down warp and get stuck and it's kind of annoying because swimming out can be pretty bad. Sub star. This is the last time you'll see the sub because after this I'm gonna go to Bowser in the Fire Sea. I split DDD up because um, after, it's mainly just because of the lag. It's better to split DDD up like this.
Now I'm gonna be heading off to Bowser in the Fire Sea, which has a very tight cycle you can make with the red coin star, where you can make it past the elevators midway through the stage without having to wait. I'm gonna go for the fastest variant called Lava Boost Early Ellies, where I'm gonna try to get a Lava Boost onto those elevators. You need a really good Fire Sea in order to get it to the credit bonus here. Okay, that's bad. So now I can't make this cycle anymore. Or I can't make boost delays. I might still be able to move all those early delays. That was perfect up until that point, though. I, that, if I didn't miss that red point, that would have made it. Uh -oh. So I'm not going to get early delays here. That sucks. That's fine, though. Basically, I would just get past this without having to wait here. ceiling there. If you're too low, a ceiling hitbox extends 160 units downwards. That's what I accidentally hit. Right, Hopefully I don't mess up this wall jump here. trying to do a dive rod off that box. Alright, not the greatest fire sea ever. But it works. So in terms of Bowser throws, this is the worst one to miss, although it's one of the easiest ones to make. Because when Bowser does this attack, he you can't actually grab him during this. So I have to wait for him, and he would do this attack again if I threw him off the edge. Which I didn't, thankfully. So unless something really badly happens in this next three stars, I'm going to be getting a 109 up, which is alright. That's around a bit below average, but we'll be fine. I'm going to start with the Manta Ray star. This star is infamous for having trolley hitboxes. Thankfully, just the first fight away this usually works. Now I'm going to be heading into the second area for the other two stars. I'm also going into Mario Cam at the start of DDD because that will that will pull also like the game. It's a bit of a fun fact about DDD here. So I'm going to be midway through this tunnel. I'm going to be going through what's called a loading point, and. It's not actually going to keep Mario in the same place. As I just went through that loading point, I actually just transitioned 8,192 units backwards because the tunnel actually protrudes into the other section. These two sections of DDD actually overlap. It's kind of hilarious. Also, I messed up my inputs there, but I should still be able to get this. You can also swim through this jet stream. You don't need the metal cap for this one either. So, this star you're actually intended to use both the metal and the vanish caps, but stupidly enough, Nintendo didn't realize you could just use the... I messed up my over there. You can just use the vanish cap to get inside the cage. Alright, there we go. Now 
Now we're done with that entire portion of the game. That's a 109.50 up on my end. Not too great, but we can work with it. So now we're gonna head to Wet Dry World. So this level's gimmick is whatever height you enter the painting at will be will determine the water level. I'm actually gonna start by entering on the highest water level. You guys, getting the star first is faster, just for movement's sake. So this is the only star you'll see me do on this higher water level. It's also the last instance of like really big swimming you'll see me do. I guess it's actually like a point star in this level. So for the rest of the stars, I'm either going to be entering on the low water level, or for one of them, I'm going to be entering on the medium. So I'm going to be doing the 100 coin star, but unlike 70 star, I'm actually going to be doing the 100 coin star with the red coin star, instead of the secrets, because it's a little bit faster to do that. I need that coin. You can't miss a single point in this first section. It's also a kind of tricky jump coming up here where I'm going to try to jump into the pipe with the water level. I'm going to try to use the slope to jump into the pipe without having to raise the water level and it's really tricky. If I mess it up, I fall all the way down and lose a ton of time. Right here. Right, we're good. Or, or not. Classic marathon lock if that has never happened before. That should work. There we go. Alright. Not quite great, but I didn't fall all the way down, so we're good. And I'm gonna get the red points here. And there's a t bunch of tiny optimizations I do everywhere. Aiming to get all those coins in one go. Alright. I was trying to get that. Um, I was trying to break that coin box from below using the double jump, but I wasn't high enough, I guess. Okay. I'm gonna do something here called a star dance clip, where. When Mario grabs a star, he's put into a state where he can automatically grab onto ledges, like this, or not. And I, if I had done that properly, then he would have grabbed onto the ledge from above, but instead of grabbing the ledge, he would have just snapped onto it. And now I'm going to do the secret star. This is the star you would normally do the 100 point star with. Star has some interesting movement. I'm pushing the center of these boxes because that actually makes the secret earlier. That was weird, I don't know why I didn't jump onto the box right away. This ant might wreck me. Alright, it did not wreck me. This is another place where you can get sound glitch on the JP version of the game. If you do that part incorrectly, then you can get the sound glitch that I talked about in SSL, but again, I'm playing with the English version, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeehaw. Okay, so now for this next star, I'm going to go for a really difficult triple jump wall kick. That saves like four seconds. And for the sake of this run, I'm probably only going to attempt it once. Unless I feel really confident. Uh, that was a really bad angle. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more time. Because I think I can do this. There we go. So I'd say that was like around even with doing that the intended way.
to do that, you need pretty much maximum height out of that wall jump, and you also need a really early frame wall kick. Alright, so this is the last star I'm going to do on the low water level. This is one of the most hilarious stars in the game, in my opinion, because there's like six different ways you can skip the arrow lifts, and the best way is to just take that warp, which puts you above the cannon. It puts you near the cannon that's right above the star. No idea how Nintendo overlooked that. But it's amazing. Alright, so this is the star I'm going to be doing on the medium water level. Because it'll allow me to get on the ramp quicker. And that's where I'm going to be. You can do the triple jump walk kick on this star that I did on the other star, but it's a lot more risky. Because if you miss it, you can fall into the water. And also, it only saves like one second on this star, so I don't think it's worth it. For me anyways, so a lot of people will do it. Alright, next up is Tiny Huge Island. So for this level, um, there's two entrances, a big entrance and a small entrance. Um, the big entrance, I'm going to be going to the small entrance for all stars. Simply because the big entrance is way too far away for it to be worth it. But there's pipes that allow me to switch between which version of the island I'm on. The secret star is really impressive to both watch and do. Perfect. So that clip you saw me do on that mountain there, if, it, if a floor like that is really steep, its hitbox is really thin, and with a good enough speed and angle, you can dive into it. And that's how I was able to do that. Alright, time for the 100 point star. This is another really tricky star. I did not mean to triple jump there. Oh boy. Alright, so I messed that up. I'm gonna just do a safe back up shot. Right. Gonna... Okay, this is not going as planned. This beginning part is really dumb. Alright, there we go. So because of that, I now have one extra coin, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Alright, so I need to make sure I ground pound these big Goombas, um, and not long jump into them, because, um, they, otherwise they'll only give me yellow coins, if I ground pound them, they give you blue coins. I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but, okay. This TH I remember is really bad. The star just sucks overall. Alright, I'm gonna skip out on that point. Right, this part can be also kind of annoying. These, these guys don't like to cooperate. Alright, fly guy cooperated. Right. I'm gonna shell here for a little bit. I got this coin. Those are, there's the two backup points you can get if you just two coins in this level. Alright, I'm gonna be silent for the red coin cave because any missed inwards here will result in death. Alright, that was perfect. Alright, we're good. That star is super easy to die to. But unfortunately, that star was not great. Because the beginning was bad. Alright, I'm gonna do the first star here. Now. Again, I'm just gonna take this island right here to... get straight to the big island. Take that pipe, rather. Execute these piranhas. Not much to say about this star. The next star, however, is there is something I want to talk about. So for the Wiggler star, you're supposed to ground pound the water on top of the small island and then head into the pipe and head all the way over and enter the hole that's formed. But the loading zone for Wiggler is still loaded, it's just 
um, underneath the water in a specific area. And so I'm going to use another steep floor clip here to clip inside the water that's low, rendered below the Wibbler's Cave, like this, and then just swim straight into loading zone. Like that. And then the Wibbler box pretty much speaks for itself. Most blocks in this game are really easy. So that Wiggler is dead. And he flooded his mansion even though we did no such thing. He says we flooded his mansion even though we did no such thing. stars left. This star is once again pretty self-explanatory. Time to, now we're gonna once again prove that Koopa the Quick sucks and he doesn't actually live up to his name on this star. So what I'm actually gonna do for this star is I'm gonna instead of going the normal way like you're supposed to, I'm just gonna fall down here and of all things use a Koopa shell to get all the way to the end of the track. And this is just once again to get to the end of the course a few seconds quicker, because, oh boy. Again, the faster you finish the race, the faster he finishes. I have actually never had that happen before, and I don't know how I still live. But we're fine. I still managed to finish a couple seconds faster than I would have if I had taken the normal route. And that's THI. So that wasn't too great, because the 100 wasn't too great. But I think the other stars kind of made up for it. Next up is TTM, or Tossel Mountain. Another really tricky stage in 120 Star. There's a lot that can go wrong here. But first, an easy time star, because that's always fun. So for these first three stars, I'm going to be doing something called Mountain Clip. It uses the same steep floor physics that I talked about earlier. I'm also going to be doing something with the water and up warping like that. So there's a mechanic in this game where no matter where you enter a body of water from, you're always programmed to appear on the top of the surface, so that's what happens there. And um, as you saw um, right there, you can do a double jump onto a slope and have your third jump be a triple jump. And you can triple jump up slopes like that. That's just another way you can climb slopes in this game. Alright, I'm going to try that again for the next two stars. There's a couple of backups I can do if I fail this. I'm also doing this wall walk pick. This is kind of risky and only saves a second. Alright, I'm going to use AP kicks to get. So I'm going to go for something here called the monkey or Yukiki glitch. Where I'm gonna I'm gonna do this kind of slowly, but I'm gonna grab you Kiki, but I'm, rather than let him go, I'm gonna say hold on. And then I'm gonna try to land on this slope, and then I'm gonna say free him, but for whatever reason I'm still holding on to him. So I can jump over here, ground pound. Ah, oh, that sucks. If I had done that properly, I think I was too far to the left, but if I had done that properly, then he would just be over here and he'd be ready to go. So that loses around maybe 20 seconds, probably more. It's okay though. At least I didn't have to bring him all the way back up the mountain. That's an unfortunate time loss, but it's a it's a kind of difficult trick to get down, and I didn't really practice it a whole lot. All right, just one more mountain clip star, and then we'll be done with those for the rest of the run. Hopefully, I don't mess this one up. Right, 
something I haven't talked about yet is well, earlier I mentioned how ceiling hitboxes have uh, ceilings have hitboxes that extend 160 units downwards. Unless overridden by a four, they also extend upwards to infinity. And as a result, in some places where the geometry is very poorly programmed, you can actually hit one of these exposed ceiling hitboxes. And we call them invisible walls because, like, we used to believe they were walls until it was proven they were ceilings. Also, why blast is only mushroom when you need a crazy box. And there's a lot of them at this level. Uh, fortunately, there's ways to avoid most of them. But if I bonk on something for no reason, it's usually an invisible. Or a ceiling hitbox, rather. Alright, so this is one of the more interesting 100 coin routes in the game. As well. I'm actually going to be going on the slide for her to get around 60 coins. But I'm going to be doing it with the red coins. Right, these jumps across this mushrooms are really scary. Side flipping in this game is hard, as is with every 3D Mario game. Alright, that's fine. I can miss one point in this level. That is not what I meant to do. No, I can't miss any coins on the slide. It's fine. This wall jump kind of sucks. I'm gonna try not to miss any coins on the side, but at the start of the side here, I'm gonna do this cool little glitch where. Right now, I just entered first person camera there. So, what I did there was, I, as I was sliding onto the slope, I hit C up, which causes Mario to skid to a stop and then enter first person mode. But if you do that right before going onto the ski slope, you will start gaining an incredible amount of speed. And you can use that to save quite a bit of time on the start. Okay, I missed a coin there, that sucks. I'm just gonna have. This means I'm just gonna have to throw one extra bob on at the end of the level. You're supposed to exit this side with 99 coins and then just kill a bob on for your 100 coin. But there's plenty of backup coins later on. Like, you literally have 13 coins right next to where the 100 coin star is. Or the red coin star, I mean. So hopefully I don't die here. If I die anywhere from this point on, I have to go back onto the slide. And that loses a ton of time. So I'm gonna kill this bob bomb, get its coin. And then kill this bob bomb and get its coin. And there we go, that's on. This long jump to the mushroom is risky. If I bonk on an invisible wall here, I, I will die. But we're good. So this last star, I'm gonna be attempt I'm gonna skip the slide entirely, and I can do it one of two ways. I'm gonna go for the method called Freezeless, where I'm gonna triple jump wall kick into a fence that has a one-way sided wall hitbox that will push me into the mountain if I hit it properly. And I'm gonna try to ground pound into the star compartment. Easy. There you go. Normally you would just w go all the way to the left and then take the breeze and then just jump into the star compartment, but you can also do that and it's really easy. Okay, it's not really easy. It's actually really, really difficult, so I just made it look easy. But it has easy in the name. So. Here's Snowman's Land. This is one other one of the faster stages in the game, but it's also one of the more difficult. I'm going to start with Snowman's Big Head. Got that walk kick. There's only a tiny part that you can walk kick off of, and the rest is just ceilings. So, thank goodness I got that. Alright, next I'm going to do the Inkaloo Star. This is one of the hardest stars in the game. And no, I'm not exaggerating. That part right there is so difficult. And then the Igloo in this camera sucks. I mean, the, the Igloo in this camera, the camera in this Igloo sucks. You basically have to stay in um, close-up Mario cam the entire time. And it's really annoying. But that actually went a lot better than usual. Next is Whirl from the Freezing Pond. I'm gonna do a, another speed pick to start a triple jump here, and you get to see how advantageable it is. Ah, I didn't get the ground pound next to the box. You can get the ground pound right next to the box, and it makes that strat really cool looking, but it's it's all right. We're good. Here comes, a, and now we have another big RNG factor because those are fun. 
Um, I'm gonna be doing the 100 coin star here, and these money bags are notorious for having their coins just fly all over the place for no good reason. All right, that wasn't too great. I can work with that though. I'm gonna let that coin go. You also you kill a lot of these spin drifts, which drop three coins. They're also annoying. Hello, I was pressing Z. These spin drifts are kind of annoying. And again, this next move just sucks. But once you get past that part, you're usually fine. I'm gonna kill this Goomba just to get its coin. I technically don't need it, but it's helpful. And I wanna I wanna make sure I have a spare coin in case I get bad RNG later on. So I don't have to kill any extra enemies. Um, I did not mean to do that. You have to be holding neutral when you have that low speed and in order to get a speed punch, otherwise you'll die like that and you really stupid amounts of time. Alright, so at this point I have one spare coin. Otherwise I'll have to kill an extra enemy. And hopefully I don't miss any, because there's a bunch of enemies in this stage that can screw you over. And if I lose my shell from this point on, it's pretty bad. Like that snowball almost just hit me. Guys, you can actually technically get both of those red coins without the shell, but it's really stupid. So what I would have done is I would have just killed that big bully on his star after getting the 100 point star, and then... Now the last two stars in this level are ridiculously easy and really fast. Or now that I've said that, there I'm probably gonna mess up both of them. But who knows? There we go. Now I've got the chill with the bully star coming up. I know a lot of people enjoy this star because of the noise that the bully makes as you're pushing it in the little to the lava. Right. I guess it's ice in this level. Right. And now we head on to another really stressful part of the run, and that is Tippy. So Tippy contains is the tip top floor of the castle. It contains Tick Tock Park, Rainbow Ride, Bowser in the Sky. And this is the first stage I'm gonna go to Wing Mario over the Rainbow. So Wing Mario over the Rainbow, it's not that hard of a stage, but you do not want to fall on this stage. Because if I you fall anywhere in this stage, you go all the way back outside the castle and it takes like 30 seconds to get back up. So that you would lose a lot of time here. Unfortunately, that beginning part is the hardest part, so once you get past this, you're usually good. Oh boy, almost pulled a point game there. Also, this is the only star in the game that cannot be collected without use of the wing cap or cannons, even with pass. These two cannon shots are actually kind of fun, because you barely have to aim for this first one. Here comes the kind of difficult part. I'm gonna try to grab this red coin without touching the pole, but it's very likely that I will touch the pole. Unfortunately, I didn't, which is good. All right, we managed to get past the stage with no issues. And now it's time for TikTok Clock, a rather fan favorite level. 
So this level is easily one of the fast, most fast-paced stages in the game. I think we can all agree on that. So I'm gonna start with the 100 coin star, which is a really technical star. There's a lot of really precise movement and stuff. A lot of really tricky jumps. I, I was gonna go for a double wall kick there, but then the angle I would have had for the strip jump wall kick wouldn't have worked, so I'm thankful that I ledge grabbed there. Alright, so if I don't. This strip jump wall kick kinda sucks. These 10 coin boxes can be a little annoying because unless you handle them properly, then their coins will just go flying everywhere. Alright, you can get into this wall there. I meant to go for a kick there that was supposed to kick the box, but I held for it a little too much. But that wasn't too bad in a TPC 100. Now I'm going to try to do some wall kicks off to the Thwomp Star. Okay, I was not expecting the swamp to be able. I was not expecting to be able to wall kick off that swamp. So the gimmick with this level is depending on what time you enter the painting, whether you're on the 12, 3, 6, or 9, time will either be stopped, slow, random, or fast. For these next three stars, I'm going to enter on the fast setting because I'll be able to do this strat. As you can see. If I fail at one of these three times, there is I can do the red coin star as a backup, but otherwise, this is going to be kind of... I, have to just, I just want to get this all three times. I didn't think I was going to get it there. I'm barely off for collecting that star. all three stars, which is pretty nice. I didn't have to do any stupid backups. For these last two stars, I'm going to enter on time stop, just because convenience. Even though I have to wait on this hand for like 10 years. Yeah, that was 10 years. I counted. You don't realize it, but I'm skipping like over half of PPC. I mean, just by doing a bunch of jumps. All right, one more star, and it's the red coin star. This is a no. T this is actually a deceptively difficult star to do fast. It looks. It doesn't look too bad, but it's actually really hard. And I might have just entered on time fast. I did. All right, you get to see moving reds. So this is... All right, this, this kind of sucks. Fortunately, I have done this as a backup many times in my day, so it's not too bad. And with that, we're done with Take Clock Clock. Time for the last course in the run, Rainbow Ride. So, otherwise known as Reset Ride. And here's the last hard code star. So Rainbow Ride, you're supposed to ride a bunch of magic carpets throughout this stage, but for all except one star, I'm going to be skipping these magic carpets. And for this first star, I'm going to be doing it using a method called Lakitu like, Bounce, where I'm going to lure Lakitu like, into a position that will allow me to bounce up onto the ramp after doing this triple jump walk kick. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the slightly slower but more consistent bounce. I had to climb up kind of big there. And that's another way to climb up slips, just by using backwards jump kicks. Played a little safe there, and we're good. I have to do that one more time in this run for the Cannon Star. Alright, now it's time for the 100 coin star. Um, so this is probably the longest star in the run. And that fly guy just trolled me. So if that fly guy didn't just troll me there, then I could have kicked him and gotten, potentially gotten two extra points from him. I don't need them, but I would have liked them. Okay, he's going into weird places. Uh, that coin's gonna fall. Yeah, it's gonna fall. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna have to call a bob on now. Had the fly guy behaved, I could have avoided that. Yeah, that's an arch ball pick there. Sad if that coin fell off there. I'm gonna open the cannon here so that I have it ready for when I get onto the ship the second time. And I'm gonna head over to the big house in the sky carpet. Okay, I don't know how I survived that. Or I don't know how I made it past that without falling. And this is basically a minute and a half long auto scroller. <coughs> with no way to really speed it up. So while I'm looking at the beautiful sky, I'll explain how you could actually skip this carpet in TAS. Or, like, it's theorized that you could do this RTA because the human has pulled it off using game shark codes. So, you can get one of the bob bombs on the ship, get into the bloated state, get it into the hands free state, carry it to the teleporter on top of the red coin base, and then. The bob will be in a well, the bob will be in a state where it's now no longer like visible, but its hitbox still affects Mario and is a lot more mobile. And then you can use some very precise jumps to get off to the top of the house. If that sounds complicated, it is, and it's actually extremely difficult. And no human has done it without tools of any kind. So we've got just a little while longer to wait on this carpet. It's unfortunately really slow. I'm gonna stand at the front of the carpet here so that when I grab the 100th point, I can just mash A, and then I'll uh, grab the star and I can still land on the carpet. Now this fire spitter, the first time you pass by it, it's low enough so that you can't hit it. The second time, though, it is. So by doing that um, wall kick into that triple jump, I'm able to make it so that the fire doesn't get in my way, and so I don't even have to worry about it. And now I'm going to do a side flip wall kick dive into the star. If I miss this, it's okay, because I'll just land back on the carpet. But I got it, so it doesn't matter. And we're done with the uh, Rainbow Rider 100 coins. That's the last 100 coin star on the run. So now it's time for the second like YouTube bounce. It's basically the exact same thing. There's also a couple backup stars if you miss this. Alright, now I'm gonna head to the cannon. I'm gonna go for this cool windy side flip. Now I gotta do this cannon shot. This cannon shot can be a little difficult sometimes, but I think that works. And we're good. So now I don't have to do that any more times. That's a good thing to know. Alright, time for tricky triangles. This is a star that I will probably die to. Alright, we're not going to do tricky triangles. We're instead going to do swing the breeze. Because I messed up my movement. 
And this is not how you're supposed to do this star, but I have to do this backup movement. No! Oh. Alright, that's unfortunate. There we go. All that could have been avoided by just getting punch. Alright, two more stars. Well, I'm gonna do swing it in the breeze the proper way this time. Hopefully. This is actually not that hard of a star normally. It's just this last long term that's a little tricky. Because the angle isn't in the notches on your controller. Alright, and the last star we have is the red coin star. That's actually the first death of the run. That was honestly really disappointing because I had a deathless run going. Side flipping is hard. Alright, I don't think I can get a 148 this run. Because I've unfortunately lost a lot of time from that death. Unless I have like a god tier bits, which won't happen. But now we have 119 stars, it's time for the final level and the final star of the game, Bowser in the Sky. This doesn't have too much crazy stuff going on in it. Uh, it's just getting like red coins fast. Sick back up. I was trying to triple jump for that red coin, but that works just as well. Oh! That really upsets me. I don't know what happened there. I was trying to fall off the ledge and get into a double jump. I don't know why that didn't work. Once again, this is a triple jump, so I'm pretty much set up to do the exact same thing again. There we go. I thought for sure I was going to go that. Alright. Nothing too crazy here. I'm going to go for a side flip over this flame here. What's that? It's just a little bit faster to do that. That's the final star of the game. So, after this, we just have Bowser throws. Also, I haven't been. Also, that's the first time I've saved this entire run. Saving saves lag frames. Not saving saves lag frames. That's the first time I've saved this entire run. Alright, Bowser throws. Notorious for killing many good runs. That's one. Two? No, nope, too early. Alright. That's, that's fine. Oh boy. I was not expecting Bob to get stuck in one time early. There we go. Alright, so time is going to be when uh, I touch the big star at the end, so get ready for that. And time. My timer says 149.34. That's not that great of a time, but it's still sub 150, which is a run I will accept. Not that great of a run, but you know, you learn to live with it. 
yeah, that's all I've got to show you for in terms of Super Mario 64. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, I don't have much to say. Um, I guess you can... I guess I would recommend learning this game because it's a really, really good speed game. Uh, yeah. So, with that, I think I'm just going to let whoever's hosting take over. Thank you all for watching, and I will no longer be here for the rest of the marathon, so goodbye.